Hey everybody, I'm Kevin Carr and today we're going to go through the diagonal cable lift progression. We're going to go through all the progressions from tall kneeling, half kneeling, all the way to standing. When I first introduce somebody to this exercise, the first progression I'm going to use is a tall kneeling progression where we're going to be on the ground with two knees right underneath our hips and our toes dug in behind us. This is going to be the most stable entry level position because the client really only has to stabilize in the sagittal plane. There's not going to be a lot of challenge in the frontal plane or in the transverse plane because of this bilateral base. They're going to have to manage their rib cage in the frontal plane, but they're pretty solid through their base, so they're not going to have as much side to side movement. So this is going to be a good place to start for a beginner. You want to start lined up with a cable uh, machine lined up at the bottom. So when I have my anchor here, it's anchored at the bottom. I have a tricep rope right next to me. I have two knees on the ground again, my toes are tucked in. I'm gonna grab the tricep rope just like this. I wanna think about organizing my torso so my pelvis and my rib cage are lined up. Like I said, the main focus of this particular progression is managing your torso positioning in the sagittal plane. So we wanna have a good front to back relationship with our rib cage and our pelvis. We don't wanna be overextended, we don't wanna be overflexed. So the cue I like to use is say, imagine you had a belt on, I want you to try to point your belt buckle up towards your belly button or towards the ceiling. So you're just gonna slightly relatively posterior tilt. We don't wanna round out our back, we're just trying to kind of scoop our pelvis underneath so we can better utilize our obliques and our anterior abdominal wall. We're gonna grab the handle like this, okay? I want the client to follow the handle with their eyes and their head, so they're gonna get some slight thoracic and cervical rotation, but I want them to try to stay as quiet and as still as possible from the bottom of the rib cage down. So they're gonna think about squeezing their glutes, maintaining tension in their torso here. So again, I'm gonna pull this up to my chest, pause, reach, down, and back down. So I'm gonna pause at my chest on each progression all the way through. So this really becomes an anti-extension and anti-rotation exercise. I'm trying to be able to resist that torque coming across my body. From there, to progress the client, we're gonna to go to a half kneeling position. And once we go into half kneeling, half kneeling is what we call like a self-limiting position. It's really hard to cheat. We're gonna be able to tell if the client's not able to maintain their uh, positioning and their stability because they're gonna side bend and slide their hip in and slide their hip out. So I want this inside knee down, and that's gonna cause a big challenge in the frontal plane to this downside hip, because the natural tendency for the client is gonna be to side bend. So again, I want them to tuck this back toe in. I want them to think about same thing with their pelvis, almost kind of tuck it under a little bit. They're probably gonna feel a little bit of a hip flexor stretch on this downside hip. Squeezing their glute nice and tight, and keeping their rib cage down. Now, again, this is much more of a transverse and frontal plane stability exercise because of this offset half kneeling nature that we're in. So I'm holding here. Again, follow the tricep rope with your eyes. You're gonna bring it up to your chest. Reach, chest, down. Chest, reach, chest, down. And again, we're gonna get some slight thoracic and cervical rotation, but I wanna stay as quiet as possible through my lower half. Again, if you're doing this in half kneeling, you would obviously have to do the other side. So I would turn face the other way like this and then work on my other hip. So we wanna make sure um, that we're going from both directions. From there, we're gonna to start to progress our way upward. So when we're progressing, we're just slightly adding joints. We're moving our way up from the ground and now we could progress an athlete to what we call an ISO split position. So I'm just gonna elevate my knee one or two inches off the ground. So I'm in kind of an ISO split squat and hold here, okay? This is gonna, one, challenge the lower body strength isometrically, as well as more frontal and transverse plane stability. That might be a great option for an athlete who needs to be in a split position a lot in sports and is strong through their lower half, so they can be able to hold that position effectively. But you might have someone who struggles in that position or doesn't feel great, so it's perfectly fine to just skip that and move up to a bilateral stance and standing. So I'm gonna get this pad out of the way. Again, lined up right next to me here. I'm in a bilateral stance position, slight bend in the knees, tuck pelvis under. Okay, again, I'm not in flexion. I just don't wanna be in a big uh, extension posture or a big flexion posture. Okay, I just wanna be able to feel those abs a little bit. We're gonna come here, bring it up to my chest, reach here and here. And you're gonna find that you're gonna be able to be stronger in this position than you are in half kneeling. And in fact, 
lots of your clients are going to say, this feels easier than half kneeling. Why is this a progression and not a regression? And the truth is, it's because you have to really earn your way up to this stance. We want to see that people are able to maintain their positioning in the frontal plane in that half kneeling position before they're able to start to use more load in this bilateral stance here. They're going to be stronger here. They're going to be able to put more weight on the cable machine. Then from there, if we want to continue to challenge the progression positions, I would just go in what I call like a mid stance position. So if I start a little bit behind the cable, just walk naturally, freeze right about here on my back toe, soft front knee, just like you're in your mid stance. Now again, we're starting to challenge that frontal plane stability of the pelvis. This is a really good drill I like to use with runners who might struggle and have that lateral hip tension, lateral quad tension that you get from lots of gait, lots of repeated steps um, that sometimes happen when they have trouble controlling pelvic position. Okay, so I'm here, stacked position, chest, reach, chest, down. Chest, reach, chest, down. Now you don't need a lot of weight. That's about 15 pounds on there. Most people are gonna be anywhere from like 10 to 30 something pounds on there because again, it's not really an upper body exercise as much as it's a trunk and stability exercise. We wanna make sure they're able to maintain the position and resist that cross body torque that, the, that we're bringing across with the handle. So give those progressions a try. Thanks for watching. If you want us to go over some other exercises in the future, let us know below in the comments.